So who wants to go over some pharmacology mock exam questions? So we are currently in week eight of the VIP board exam prep academy. Every week we go over different topics that you have to know for the board exam. We have PowerPoints, we have teaching videos, mock exams, case studies. So you can really focus per week of what you need to study for the board exam. Nothing more and nothing less. This week is pharmacology and pharmacology is always a trickier topic because it's boring. I mean, it, it is for me at least and most students. So maybe you like it, but let's go over a few mock exam questions for you now to see how you are doing in your current pharmacology studying. And if you need help, let me know. So I'm going to share my screen here. This is one of the PowerPoints that I share with my students. I'm just going to start on slide 76 because this was actually part of a, a ethics and communications classes or sorry ethics and professionalism class as well but in this video let's just talk about pharmacology because i know that's what you want to talk about probably because that's why you clicked this video so let me share my screen here when status ellipticus um happens you need to give this is hard to say <laughs> ellipticus epicticus <laughs> what when this happens you need to give what? So in a medical emergency, when this is happening as a dental professional, what do you need to give? And feel free to pause the video if you need a little more time to think. Okay. So you need to give diazepam. The other drugs are used for seizures, but diazepam is best for the status ellipticus type. So remember you guys, when we're talking about seizures, there are different categories, right? There's different types. If you don't know what those are, then go back to your pharmacology. If you're a student of mine watching this video, you have that, that PowerPoint in your pharmacology module to go over the different categories and different types. So definitely do that. Okay, so let's go through a few other questions for you. Nitrous oxide, you should not use in the following. So when using nitrous oxide, this is used for many things, but what would you not use it for. In our textbook, in our dental hygiene or dental assisting textbook, what is contraindicated? What do you guys think? Okay, so it is going to be emphysema. Can anybody tell me why? Why would you think that emphysema is contraindicated? So let's think about nitrous oxide. Through the nose and through the mouth, right? It's going to travel through. If you're having troubles breathing or your lung capacity isn't such, the nitrous oxide isn't going to work how it should. So what's the point of even administering it? There's going to be other needs, or sorry, other means that are better. You can do it in any of these other things, but not emphysema. Nitrous oxide is very common in the dental office for dealing with, you know, pain management. I mean, it doesn't deal with pain. You, you still need a pain management, such as um, the local anesthetic, but nitrous oxide helps to calm you down. It's very common with children. It just helps to make them feel better about the whole thing and adults as, as well. It's not a painkiller, not pain management. So it doesn't eliminate local anesthetic. You still need to put the tooth to sleep. We like to call it, right? If you don't do that, even under nitrous oxide, it's going to cause pain. It just helps to make people feel better. It helps to calm them down. Okay, let's do another one here. You need to know the INR number when the patient is taking what? So if you're thinking to yourself, what is an INR number? You need to go back and study more pharmacology. So when the patient is taking what? When you're going over the medical history, what is going to alert you to be like, huh, uh, what's the INR number? You should know this since you're taking this. It's going to be warfarin. Do you guys remember what warfarin is? Think about blood clotting. Does it thin the blood? Does it make it thinner? So it thins the blood so the blood can't clot but you need to know their INR number for this to happen because in some cases, depending on if you're performing dental surgery or a tooth extraction, they might need to go off warfarin because we don't want it so the blood clots don't form. That could be another medical emergency, right? Wouldn't be good. Let's go through, through one more. How is everybody doing so far? What drug is used to treat candidiasis? I can't pronounce some of these, but I'll give you guys a second to think about them. And feel free to pause the video if I'm going too fast. What drug is used to treat candidiasis? 
Nystatin. This is the only one and this is the best one. It's used to treat fungal infections. Okay, so with this PowerPoint, this was our moth exams and case studies class. There's 90 slides. The first part was talking about ethics and responsibility, but this is a 90 slide PowerPoint. So when you're in the VIP Board Exam Prep Academy, we go over these questions, mock exams, case studies every single week. So you're constantly learning, but we also go over a lecture class too. So that way I teach you the material first, and then you have mock exams and case studies questions to kind of prepare you to see if you really know the material. So definitely check out the VIP Board Exam Prep Academy. If you're taking the board exam, either for dental assisting students or dental hygiene students, I have both because I was a dental assistant first, and then I became a dental hygienist. And now I currently work for myself in my own mobile dental hygiene practice, but it really is a passion of mine to help students pass that board exam. I know it's hard. I know it's stressful, but you can't start your dream career until you pass it, right? So let me help you. I've been doing this since 2005. That's a long time. This is my full-time job and I love it. So thank you guys for watching. Always reach out to me if you need anything. Follow me on my social media pages. I do have the links to those in the description down below. Um, Instagram, Facebook, I'm very active on. And on YouTube, I do upload these new videos every Mondays and Thursdays. So definitely check them out. Okay, you guys, thank you for watching. And I hope you did well with our pharmacology mock exam practice. <laughs>